coming up on episode 153 of Create If Writing, I'm talking about how to promote your book with newsletter swaps. to sleep it's almost light these restless thoughts have cut me up again tonight hello hello and welcome to create if writing i'm your host kirsten oliphant and this is the podcast for you a writer blogger or creative who wants to build an online platform without being smarmy i'm so glad that you are here listening today whether it's your first time or your 150 third time to listen to this show, or maybe somewhere in between. But I'm going through a series breaking down how I went from making under $100 last year through book sales to over $8,000 in January. Admittedly, this was less in February. February was not a stellar month, but it was still a nice, solid, almost, I think, $4,500 and could be more, could be less. Amazon has not, as far as this I guess recording goes has not announced what their pages red price will be, which kind of makes it fluctuate. So somewhere around the neighborhood of 4,500 in February, hoping for more in March, but we'll see. Either way, impressive coming from $100. I'm really critical, so I feel like everyone should be better and I get mad when it's not, but that's just reality, keeping it real for you. So in this episode, I'm going to talk about newsletter swaps, and this is something that's really important if you are writing fiction especially. And I will have a note in here for the nonfiction authors about how you can use this. It just looks a little bit different. So I want to get right in. If you want to find the show notes, which are pretty epic blog posts with links and other resources in them, you can go to createifwriting.com forward slash 153 to find the show notes. So let's talk about promoting your book with newsletter swaps. First of all, if you don't know what a newsletter swap is, Let me explain it for you and break it down. It's essentially a pretty simple thing. It's an effective promotional tool where authors will send their audience an email promoting other authors' books in exchange for those other authors promoting their books. Now, this doesn't always look like trading on the same exact day and things like that. Like, it's not like a, I'll trade Saturday if you trade Saturday, because every author kind of sends these on different days and we might have different promotional schedules. And so it's lining up you know, a date for me and a date for you, whatever those look like, but basically exchanging that spot and giving up a spot in your newsletter to another author. And this is a really great tool, one, because it's free other than the cost of setting up an email list, but it's a really great way to network as well and really get into the community of other authors in your genre. So I want to talk now that I've said what it is, if you weren't sure, I want to talk about the specifics of how you find people to swap with, what it should look like in your email, and then tips and things that I've kind of learned over the past year of running these newsletter swaps. So let's start first. I think this is the biggest question people have is how do you find people to swap with? And there are a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, The main way that I'm going to recommend is through Facebook groups that are genre specific. So for me, I'm in a couple different swaps groups. Um, I'm in one, even though I'm not writing YA, uh, young adult clean romance right now, I will be later in the year. So I'm in a young adult clean romance swap group. I'm in a clean and wholesome newsletter swap group, and then another sweet romance group. They all kind of similar audiences, uh, but promoting sweet romance books. But there are also tons and tons of groups that are based around really specific, really specific, um, you know, as far as, you know, romance, specific types of romance or fantasy, clean fantasy, young adult fantasy, new adult, all of these, um, there are tons of groups. Now, I'm not going to give you a giant list because honestly, I don't have time to go search for them. Facebook search stinks, but if you get in there, it's kind of like this rabbit trail. You find a group, Facebook starts suggesting other similar groups in the sidebar of Facebook. If you're on your desktop, you can also go into bigger author groups. So if you're a young adult author, for example, there is a group and I think it's called like AAYA. It's the Alliance of, uh, I'm going to have to look, I'm going to look it up right this second as I'm talking about, but Derek Murphy from Creative Indie runs it and it's basically an alliance of young adult authors and they have a whole lot of other groups that they link to in there. Um, And they have certain days where they have share days. And so you can talk about it in there. Sometimes there's newsletter swaps in these bigger groups 
but it's a lot more helpful if you can actually get into the genre specific. So it's an alliance of young adult authors, and that's a big Facebook group. Um, and some of these other big Facebook groups might have links to newsletter swap groups in there, but just dive out into Facebook, take some time, look for some of the groups. That is a really great way to do it. And the reason that I like that, well, I'll come back to why I like that, but that's one option. Another option, um, you know, really the only other option I've seen is kind of paid or free websites that handle this and set up the swaps for you. And these, uh, Story Origin is one, and I highly recommend Story Origin just overall if you're not using it. It's a great tool for authors that is free, that has a lot of things you can do, such as um, you can put together a bundle of different authors' books that are for sale, and they'll create a sales page for you that you can all promote. So like if you all are running a 99 cent special, which I did last month, you can do that. Or if you all have free books all within a genre, or it could just be all free books, but genre specific works really well if you don't haven't noticed, I'm going to say that a lot, but genre specific works really well. But you can also do newsletter swaps through Story Origin or some other sites. And I'm not going to recommend any others by name because the only other ones I've tried, I was not happy with. But if you want to try them, you can Google this and I've seen some paid services as well. But I always like to bootstrap and start free and encourage you to start free as well, mm -hmm. especially if you don't know what you're doing at first. And this is like your first time to do it. I think it's really helpful to start free and then figure it out. Um, if you're going to invest money, know what you're doing first. Um, so those are the kind of the main options, uh, Facebook groups and then other bigger sites that set up these swaps for you. And again, I really haven't had success with those. And Story Origin might be the, the better one. I did look into that and you can do genre specific, but because I've already kind of established my routine with Facebook groups, I wasn't really interested, so I didn't try it. Um, and the reason I like Facebook groups so much is that it's a lot more personal. And I do think that that matters. You're getting genre specific already. You're you're in there with other authors in your niche who are writing the same things that you are writing. And that's super important. We'll get into why later. Um, I mean, it might be a little obvious at first, but I'll get into some more reasons why later in this episode. But it is really important. And you can also kind of track the people down. They, you might actually network with them more and you start to trust them. So the authors that I've been in these swap groups like a year, and I'm actually friends with a lot of these people now. I hang out with them. Um, last weekend, I went to a writing retreat that was like a sort of, se not secret, but it was a very small writing retreat with like 10 other girls from, or women from one of these groups. Um, and we've all connected through there. And I got to go to somebody's house who lives near me and spend the weekend with some women who are making a ton of money and really successfully self-publishing. It was so much fun all because I'm in these newsletter swap groups. That's how we connected. So they are really helpful, not just for the swap itself, which is what you're going to get on those other platforms is just the swap. But this is more networking and actually building a relationship. And, and again, I think you can trust those people more. And I'll talk a bit more about trust as we go on in the episode. So those are the main places to find them. But again, dive into Facebook groups. You can look other places as well. Um, but that's where I've primarily had my own success. Now, how do newsletter swaps work? Like what exactly does this look like? Great question. Um, so for me, I'll talk you through my process and then some general things. When I have a book that's about to come out, I'll go into one of these Facebook groups. I'll post a message, usually with a book cover. If I have a pre-order link, I'll share the link. Say, hey, I'm looking for swaps on this book. And I'll say what it is. Sometimes it's clear in the group, but sometimes it's nice to be a little more specific. Like this is a bi clean billionaire romance. romance. It's not just a clean a uh, small town romance. It's not a second chance romance. It's a clean billionaire romance. Here are the dates I'm looking for swaps. And sometimes I'll put the dates I have available, but that gets annoying because then people ask for them and then you have to go back and forth. But you can do whatever you want. I've seen people put Google forms up where people have to actually fill it out. That looks like too much work for me. So I don't tend to do those swaps where I have to fill out a spreadsheet. I also don't want to have to go through a bunch of information. It's a lot easier to track it just on a Facebook thread, even though those can get annoying. So people will comment on the thread and say, I can send on this date, here's when I need you to send. And so I have a spreadsheet, as much as I hate spreadsheets, I have a spreadsheet in just in Google Docs where I have down the dates I send my newsletter. I send a big newsletter out Saturdays and a small one on Tuesdays with just one book link. So if I'm gonna send for Tuesday, I call that a solo swap. And I usually expect the other person to do a solo swap as well, unless they have a really big list. So if it's somebody I know that has like 10 to 20,000 people on their list, I don't always <laughs> ask for a solo swap back because I feel like I'm just getting a benefit from being in there. Um, and so that's kind of how you do it. And then you keep track of it and then 
you go back and forth and you have those links in that Facebook thread. On Facebook, if you didn't know this, if you are looking at a post that you've written or someone else has that you wanna keep track of, in the top right hand corner, there is gonna be like this little drop down arrow and you can actually click on that and hit save post. And then when you're at home um, on Facebook on desktop and you kind of look at those shortcut links to the left, you can find saved posts and you can go find them. So I will usually save those posts. So when I'm coming back and filling back in that spreadsheet, because sometimes people say, I need to swap in April, I don't have the link yet. And that can be annoying later to track it down. But if you've saved the post, you're gonna save yourself some time as you know exactly where it is to find it. So once I have that, if I'm actually sending out an email, um, my emails, I do a little bit of personal first, like maybe a couple paragraphs. I wanna keep it short and sweet, but I also want to be building my relationship with my readers, especially if I'm sending out other people's books, I still wanna be personal and connect. I don't want it to look like an email that you could just get from Robin Reads or from Free Books or the Fussy Librarian. It should look like me or my pen name, Emma St. Clair. It should look like Emma sending you this email, not just some faceless company with a bunch of book recommendations. I will do a screenshot of the covers of the books and have that image linked. And I will also have the title linked. And I typically pull that first like sentence from the blurb on Amazon. Now, if they don't have a good one, I will write one, which annoys me, but I also don't wanna put like four paragraphs of text up there. Um, it's a lot easier and I wanna have something catchy. So if I have to, I will copyright that myself. If it's something that I have read, I might, instead of doing that, say, I just finished this book and it was amazing. If you liked this, then you'll like that. So personal recommendations, those get more clicks I found in my email than other things, which makes sense because I think research is showing that people are responding more to word of mouth than just advertising. So if it feels like just advertising, people will click if they're interested. But if you're telling them, I liked this and they like you, they're gonna click on that. Um, important things to note, uh, it's against the Amazon terms of service to have affiliate links in your emails. And I know a lot of people do this anyway, that is up to you. I personally, um, Amazon makes my money for me, not so much in the affiliate program, but with my books, I don't wanna do anything that could get me on the blacklist. Um, and the affiliate program is not the same as the author KDP program. However, I don't wanna risk getting kicked out of anything on Amazon. I wanna be on Amazon's good side. I'm gonna follow the rules on that. You make your choice on what you're gonna do about that. Um, they also are really kind of sticklers about you putting the price in because prices change so much on Amazon. Uh, Taylor Bradford from Boss Girl Creative actually emailed me about this after getting my Emma newsletter because I was putting the prices in there. Um, every so often, if I have my own book on sale, I will say my book is 99 cents today. But generally speaking, I don't put the prices next to the book just to stay on the up and up with that. Again, Amazon probably isn't stalking your author email. <laughs> Make your choices, but just know um, that's the thing. I'm not linking to where that is in the Amazon Terms of Service. I've seen it. Their Terms of Service are really annoying and really long. Um, you can find it yourself, but I'm also uh, linking to a post I wrote on important rules for the Amazon's associates program. Uh, you also wanna use a clean link. And what that means basically, like if you go to Amazon and click on a book and then you're looking at the URL, what it should look like is amazon.com slash something usually like DP is something they often put slash. And then it has the ASIN number, which is kind of like Amazon's equivalent of the ISBN number. That's a clean link. But often what you'll see, especially if you're clicking from Facebook, is you'll see something where it's like, amazon.com slash, and then sometimes it might have the whole title of the book, which is also okay. Then that ASIN number, then like a slash and like REF equals and a whole bunch of mess. And you don't really want that. Um, that is just not the best idea. So you wanna have links that are clean um, to put in there. And I'm not gonna get all big brother on you, but those things often will tell Amazon where people are clicking from. It's just better to have the clean link so you're not giving that extra information of like, hey, this all came from Facebook. Um, again, not gonna get all big brother on you, but Amazon's watching things that people are doing. It's just best to use a clean link. So those are that's kind of how it looks is you're just sending out that email when you send it out and you're having those other authors um, links in there. Now, some people will follow up with those authors and send them the link. It's really nice when people do that, but I don't care. I don't have time to go. Uh, check. So I kind of like the honor system and just assume. And again, here goes that trust thing. I'm in these Facebook groups. I know these authors. I'm trusting that they're sending for me. 
And I'm also on a lot of their lists. So like if you're not sure how to get started, sign up for some author lists and see how they're sending, especially authors in your genre, which is going to bring us right into tips for effective newsletter swaps. And so I've got a couple tips and then this is where I'm going to leave you because this is a pretty simple thing, even though if you haven't gotten started, it may seem overwhelming. It's really not. You just get started. Um, so the first tip is be familiar with the books you send. You probably can't read every book. I don't, and I read a lot, but I don't read every book in there. However, you may want to check out the author if you're not familiar with them. You may have some authors you don't want to swap with, and you may want to make note of that because I've had a few where, you know, I'm, again, sending, I'm writing clean romance, and I've found a few where I'm looking at the look inside on Amazon, and I'm finding cuss words in the first, you know, the look inside shows like, what, 10%, maybe less of the book. And if there's already cussing in there, it's not clean, first of all, and it's probably not going to stay clean. So that does happen rarely, um, but I will make note of that author and not send it for them again. And if I've signed up for a swap with them, I'll email them nicely and just say, hey, my readers, they don't want any language. They don't want any. And I saw on the look inside, you have language. So I'm so sorry I can't swap for you. Um, and that's okay because you are you really want to keep the trust of your readers. So it's important that you're not sending them stuff they don't want. Um, you're not breaking that trust. And so I've also found books that violated Amazon Amazon's terms of service. Um, there's something called book stuffing, which uh, it'll be like one book, but then they'll have like six extra books in there. And you're thinking, why would they do that? Well, if it's in Kindle Unlimited, you get paid by the pages read. So if somebody promotes that kind of book and they have a thousand pages in there, they're getting a lot more money if somebody reads all of it. It's called book stuffing. And it's actually against Amazon's terms of service different than a box set where all of the books are listed. I just launched a box set. All the books that are in it are listed. And um, if you are sending out stuffed books, you're promoting people who are violating Amazon's terms of service. And so I don't do that. I have found a few of those. One of them was through another newsletter swap service. Another was in a Facebook group. So just it's important to check. Um, take some time. Look at the look inside. Check out the book. Check out the author. Another huge thing, especially as you're starting out, is give before you get. You may not have a big list. If you're starting out, you don't have a list. You may not have anyone. You may have 50 people. So before you ask for anything, I this is what I did. I started sending for people. I wanted to establish kind of the content I was sending to my people, even when my list was small. So I wanted to start sending them other books. So even if I didn't have a book to promote and wasn't asking for anything in return, I was asking authors, hey, can I send for you? That may not come back to you. Um, you don't always have people who, <laughs> if you're giving freely, you might hope for something back, but you can't expect it, right? So, because otherwise it's not giving freely. I hoped that this would come back to me. And in some cases it did. And I built relationships with other authors who saw me as genu genuine and generous and willing to help. Um, and so that's something that you can do before you even have a list or have anything to promote which is why I start your list today. Um, so you can do that. So that might be a really good way to start out if you're like, I don't have a big list and I don't have any books. Um, another thing is you want to send books that cultivate the right kind of audience. And this is similar to being familiar with the books you send, but you are building your author brand. You ultimately want people to buy your books. And if you're sending books that give them the wrong message, then they're going to be confused and you're going to be building the wrong kind of audience. You want to build an audience that wants to buy your books, which makes it important to send the kinds of books that are similar to yours. And if you're worried about competition, just think about your own reading habits. If you love an author, does that mean that's the only author you read? No. And most authors don't have hundreds and hundreds of books for you to go read if that's your favorite author where you could spend the rest of your life reading all their books. No, we read across genres. We read across authors that we like. And so it is not a comp competition. I mean, yes, in some ways we are competing with other authors for sales, but when we're all building each other up, readers read, they read lots of authors. And so it's not a danger to you to promote other people. So just be cultivating the right kind of audience with the people you're sending. With that in mind, don't go outside your genre or rarely. Um, every so often I will send something else. I might send a devotional book because I do have a big Christian readership. I would never send something like erotica or something really violent because again, that goes against the culture and community and the audience that I am building and I would break their trust. You do not want to break the trust of your audience. I may read some stuff that I don't, I'm not going to tell them about or ever recommend because I do read a wide variety of things. I'm the kind of person who I like clean romance, but I really do read all across the board. I read books that have language in them. I read books that are violent. I read horror. I, you know, I really, I really am one of those people that reads 
everything. I just went on a big sci-fi kick, which I don't even like space, but that's the thing. I'm reading all that. I'm not going to recommend that to my readers, but I might recommend something outside the genre, maybe even a memoir or something else that I feel like would line up with them, but might not be strictly clean romance. So if you're going to do that, do it rarely and do it with something that's still going to line up with the values that you've set forth as an author. Keep track to be trustworthy. I have a spreadsheet, as I mentioned, I hate spreadsheets, but I have one and I am very, very firm on it. I keep it up to date. I make sure all of the things are in there. And I think that's a hugely important thing to do. Uh, So even if you're not sending the other authors a link saying, here's what I sent, although that can be a good idea. I just personally don't have time for it and I don't care when people send it. And that's my personal thing. If people ask me, I'm happy to send it. If people send me one, I'm like, thanks, but I don't have time to click it. (laughs) That just happened today. I'm like, cool, thank you. I I trusted you anyway. (laughs) So that's just me. Um, But it is important to keep track. If you ever mess up, it does happen. Just email the author. Most people are very understanding and you could do them another favor or pay it forward in some other way, send for them another time. It just happens. I've seen a couple authors post that they got sick they forgot, their internet crashed, you know, whatever it is, every so often that just happens. And so you expect it. And as long as you're honest about it and try to uh, fix that however you can, it, you know, that's okay. And you want to keep those relationships with the other authors. Another tip is not to send too many books. I usually send on my Saturdays four. Every so often my spreadsheet gets jacked up and I end up with like five. Um, But four is the most. I would actually like to start moving down to sending less But as I'm building my author brand and kind of growing my email list and trying to get my books out there, as I'm still kind of a year old in this, I sometimes need more swaps for my new releases. And so I will send four in there. Now, my Tuesday emails are just one book, one book. And so again, like those are my solo swaps. I will often do them in exchange for one more solo swap. Um, And that's just kind of how I run it. I think less is better. The more things you give people to click, the less things they click on. I have noticed that people click less on the books that come later. Um, So if you're sending four, then uh, just realize that fourth book might not get as many clicks. Um, And so realize that as you're putting it in. It's not always true. Sometimes it's about the cover. Covers really matter, you guys. So I've kind of looked at that every so often just to see what people are clicking. Um, And I've also tested whether they click more on the text links or the book cover image, which is clickable, or sometimes I'll put a button like buy now. um, And I'll check that too, to see kind of what they're doing. And you can just see what works for you and what works for your list to get people clicking, but don't send too many things. Don't give them too many things to click on. And then be genuine. Whatever, you know, when you're deciding what to send your people, um, you want to be personal. You don't want to just send them, like I already mentioned, you don't want to just send them things to buy. You want to be your own author brand. And everybody has a different level of what that looks like. Some people are super personal. I've seen some people like Lindsay Armstrong sharing pictures of her bathroom renovation, things she's doing at home. I sometimes share a really brief anecdote or story from my life, but I'm not super, I'm personable as Emma, but I'm not super personal. I do share some things, um, but not a lot. I ask questions to get people responding. And sometimes like I had a couple weeks ago, asked a question and got 50 responses, which was crazy. And I like to respond back to them. So it (laughs) took like an afternoon, but that depends on how you want to do it. But I would highly recommend that you be personal and work on building your own author brand and, and what relationship you want to have with your readers. So to kind of sum up, if you haven't started an email list, start one today. As soon as you stop listening, go start your email list. I have some other links in the show notes. I'm all big on email. You could check out my book, Email Lists Made Easy for Writers and Bloggers, which is like $5 and great to get you started on that. And you can go ahead and start connecting with other authors by looking for swap groups and giving before you have anything that you're asking for in return. So I have found really good success making sales by pairing up these newsletter swaps with the paid email promotions. Again, I'm all about the email. So this is a really great free way that you can start doing marketing and promotion. If you don't have a budget, then absolutely start sending these. And if you're not sure like how long you want to set up these swaps, I usually will set up three weeks or so of swaps for a new release, maybe four weeks. Um, And I don't always focus on that very first week. I've kind of been adopting the slow launch method, which means I launch the book and I don't do anything the first day, not even sometimes the second day. I have all of my promotions and main things happening 
between like day four and day 10 are the main things I'm paying for. But I also set up those swaps through that time, but also going through kind of three weeks to a month later. And so, you know, it doesn't all have to be in one week. If the book is on sale, it's a lot, you'll probably make more sales if you're promoting during that week. So it's okay to have a one week where there's a very intense swapping, but I found more, um, more success by swapping lots over a period of a month. And if you want to track, uh, you know, you could track daily and know who's sending on that day and see how many sales you make. It might help you to know whether or not you want to swap with someone. I know personally, I did that for a while and then stopped because I just don't have time to, to track that. I do have time to track the things I'm paying for. And I'm tracking that very, very detailed. Um, but I also looked in my own email to see if there were ever authors that people weren't clicking on. And there's a few of them that were getting no clicks because of either the cover or just something else. And so I'm not going to send for those people anymore because I don't want to waste their time either. So I think that's okay to do as well, um, kind of on that, on your end for that. But uh, overall, get started, make some connections with other authors because it's really about being personal and know that this is an effective and cost-effective marketing strategy for you. Nonfiction authors, this does not work as well uh, because people don't voraciously read nonfiction the way they do fiction. However, if you're launching a nonfiction book, it is an absolutely awesome idea to email personally other people in your space or who have an audience that would like your book and say, hey, I've got this new book coming out. Would you be willing to email your people about it? I would be happy to return the favor when you have a blog post, book, video course, or whatever it is you want to promote. That works really well. And I've done that before and seen some good sales from that. And I've done that for other people. So with nonfiction, you can absolutely do something similar, but it's not going to be as intense or intensive as the fiction. And you may not set up formal swaps in a group. It may look more like reaching out one-on-one, -on -one, but can still be effective. So if you want to find the show notes to get links and more information about this, you can go to creativewriting.com forward slash 153 for episode 153. If you're not in the free Facebook community, you should be. You can head over to creativewriting.com forward slash community to connect with other creatives for free on Facebook. And if you are not getting my weekly email that will share these links to the podcast, as well as other helpful news, resources, tools, and tips, you can go to creativewriting.com forward slash quick fix to get that Friday email. Thank you so much to Jasmine Commerce of jasminecommercemusic.com for the music on this show. She is a fabulous independent artist living in California that went to college with me. So if you have not checked her out, love her music, and she has a bunch of it for sale at jasminecommercemusic.com. Thank you so much for listening and being here. Now, go create content that you love and serve your people well. <laughs>